So there's a children's book called Miss Nelson is Missing, and Miss Nelson doesn't show up to class one day when her students are being really mean to her. So instead, she dresses up as Miss Viola Swamp, and the student's teacher is Miss Viola Swamp, and she's incredibly mean, and uh, none of the students like her. Um, and I just thought it was a really funny book. Um, it's, I think, one of the best children's books, and especially uh, as a teacher, I think it's just hilarious. So. Um, hopefully you read the book as a kid um, or uh, your parents or a teacher read it to you. If not, uh, go back, look at it. It's, it's funny and uh, it'll make this make a little bit more sense as well. So uh, we're going to take a look at the basics of series today. Uh, so if we're going to take a look at the basics of series, we're going to first have to define series, then we'll define summation notation, and then we'll find the sum of a finite arithmetic series, we'll find the sum of a finite geometric series, and then we'll also be able to find the sum of an infinite geometric series. So uh, by definition, a series is a sum of a sequence, and we did sequences in our last lesson. Uh, summation notation is going to use this Greek letter sigma. All right, that Greek letter sigma, uh, there's going to be three parts. There's going to be something below sigma, something on top, and then something just to the right of sigma. Uh, at the bottom, uh, it's going to tell us which term number to start with. And all the way up top, it's going to tell us which term to stop at. And then to the right is going to be an explicit rule. Um, we will either see an a sub n or an explicit rule that's going to generate the terms of the sequence for us. So this one that we have here, uh, since uh, we have a 1 down low and a 10 up top, this series represents the sum of terms 1 through 10 of the sequence a sub n. Uh, if we look at the second one here, we see 13 down low and 24 up top. So this represents the sum of terms 13 through 24 of the sequence b sub n. Now, yes, most of the time you're always going to start with n equals 1 down below, um, but maybe some reasons why you wouldn't be uh, is if we were actually working in the real world and we had a business that was tracking its monthly profits. And if we wanted to know uh, what our profits were for year two, well, then we'd have to add up the months for year two. Well, the first month in year two would be 13, and then the last month in year two would be 24. So this sum of terms 13 through 24 could represent the sum of the profits uh, of year two for a business. So usually I do like to show you uh, prove, derive theorems, show you where they come from, theorems and formulas, but we don't have the time for that right now. So sorry, I'm just going to say here are our formulas. Um, first, we have a formula for the sum of a finite arithmetic sequence. Then we have a uh, formula for the sum of a finite geometric sequence. And then we have a formula for the sum of an infinite geometric sequence. But now this formula for the sum of an infinite geometric sequence will only work if the R value is a small number. So technically we have to have that absolute value of R has to be less than 1. Right. If it's bigger than 1, uh, if it's equal to 1 or bigger than 1, we won't be able to find the sum of that uh, infinite geometric sequence. Um, well, what's interesting is we did finite arithmetic, finite geometric, and infinite geometric. We do not have a formula for the sum of an infinite arithmetic. There's, there's just no formula for that. You can't do it. It's not possible. It's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. All right, so um, here is our first set of questions. Find the sum of the sequence and write as a series. All right, so here we go. We need to find the sum of these. Um, uh, let's just double check what each of them are first. Um, here, looks like we're adding seven each time, so it is arithmetic. Uh, this one looks like we are adding two each time, so it is also arithmetic. Um, so this was our common difference. Let's look better. Uh, D, our common difference was, we said seven. Over here, the common difference is two. And over here, the common difference is negative three. All right, well, this first one, uh, it's finite and we have all the terms. We can count them up, one, two, three, four, five. There are six terms. So this one will be pretty easy to do. Um, this would have been the sum of, from the first, so one, two, three, four, five, first to the sixth term. Um, I'm just going to say a sub n because I don't want to write the rule right now. Uh, and that's going to be equal to six, 
and then it's the average of the first term plus the last term. All right, so six over two is three, and then negative eight plus 27 is, I believe, uh, 19. And then that would give us 57. All right, um, we could also check that by adding all of these up. All right, if we did add all of these up, let's see, 13 plus 27, uh, that would have been 40, um, 60, 66, uh, 66 minus 9, 66 minus 9 is going to get us back to 57. So we did kind of do a double check. Um, since we didn't prove the formula, we at least did verify it with one that we could tell right there. All right, difference here with this one, we do not know how many terms that we have. Yes, we have the first term and the last term, but we need to know how many terms we have. Um, so to find out how many terms we have, we're going to need to come up with the explicit rule. The explicit rule, the explicit rule generically from our last lesson was a sub n was equal to the first times n minus 1 times d. So uh, let's see here. Uh, we're looking for the term number. Um, we're looking for the term number. So we can go 70 equals 2. Plus, we don't know what n is, but we know the common difference was 2. So now we can just take this and solve. We can take this and solve for n. Um, so 70 equals 2 plus 2n minus 2. So 70 equals 2n. We divide both sides by 2. And n equals 35. So this one has 35 terms. So we could say... The sum from the first term to the 35th term, I'm just going to generically again say a sub n, um, is equal to, we had 35 terms, and then average the first term, and the last term. Mm, so 35 times 72 over 2. Uh, so 35 times uh, 36, and I'm going to need to grab my calculator. Twelve sixty. All right. Uh, next one. Again, with this one, we do not know how many terms there are, so we're going to, have to do the same thing. Uh, we're using that a sub n equals the first term plus uh, the quantity n minus 1 times d. We have our last term, which is 27, but we don't know what term number it is, so we'll have to solve for n. Common difference was negative 3. Minus 3, minus 3, 24, 111. All right, uh, where are we at? Uh, 24, 111, minus 3n. Uh, that's a 7. Two left over. All right, uh, I'm going to do a quick double check with my cal calculator. Um, all right, so we're good there. So then this one, sum from the first term to the 29th term of a sub n equal to uh, 29 times the average of the first and the last, 111 plus 27 over 2. Um, and I'm going to need to go to my calculator because I can't do all. I could do the 138 divided by 2, but then I'd still need to worry about uh, times times 29. So let's just jump to my calculator. To get 2001. All right. 
All right, so here's our next set of questions. Find the sum of the sequence and write as a series. All right, so again, we need to find the sum. Uh, what's going on with these ones here? Uh, let's first figure out if they are arithmetic or geometric. Um, looks like we are multiplying by 2. All right, so geometric with a common ratio of 2. And then this one looks like we are multiplying by 3, so geometric with a common ratio of 3. Uh, they are finite. They do not stop. So it looks like we are using this formula here. Uh, we do still need the number of terms in there, so we have to find the term number with each of these. Uh, so let's see here, uh, the explicit formula for geometric, a sub n was equal to the first term times the common ratio raised to the n minus 1. So when we fill in, since we're looking for the term number for 12,288, Uh, we'll divide both sides by 3. Uh, I should be using my calculator there. Um, I think it's that. Okay. Um, and then I need to figure out what power of 2, 4,096 is. Um, 2 to the... 2 to the 12th, All right? So 2 to the 12th is the same thing as 4,096, all right? And if the bases are the same, we haven't done this in a while, but we did this back in chapter, I think, 3 with logarithmic and exponential functions. Um, if the bases are the same, the exponents must have been the same. So 12 equals n minus 1, add 1, add 1. Um, so that means that 12,288 was the 13th term, right? It was the 13th term. So, from the first term to the 13th term, and then we're going to use this formula here. Uh, the first term was 3. 1 minus the common ratio here was 2. We're going to take that and raise it to the 13th power, and we're going to put it over 1 minus the common ratio. And I am going to go to my calculator with that. 3 parentheses 1 minus 2 raised to the 13th close parentheses divided by, um, you can just do 1 minus 2, you know it's going to be negative 1. 24,573. All right, uh, next one. Again, we need to figure out what term number this is. So, same thing using that explicit rule. Um, 98,415, the initial term 5, 3 raised to the n minus 1. Divide both sides by 5. Write both sides in terms of the same base. Uh, oh boy, uh, let's see. Uh, 3 to the 10th, too big. 3 to the 9th, uh, perfect. So then your bases are the same. All right, that was 3 to the 9th, so then make your exponents the same. So 9 equals n minus 1, add 1, add 1. So this must have been the 10th term. Okay, so we can go n equals 1 to 10 of our series, a sub n is equal to our initial term, 5, times the quantity 1 minus the common ratio was 3, raised to the k power. K is 10 uh, over 1 minus 3. And again, I'm just going to go right to my calculator.
147620. Oh. Right there is the sum of that finite geometric sequence. And here's our last set of questions. Evaluate the infinite series if possible. Okay, find the sum if it exists. Uh, it turns out all three of these are infinite, um, so they have to be geometric because if they were arithmetic, we do not have a formula for the sum of an infinite arithmetic. Um, but uh, let's see here. Um, let's see, the numerators are kind of staying the same. What's happening down low, uh, we're multiplying by three. Um, so with this one here, it uh, looks like uh, we are multiplying by three, so it looks like uh, we have a common ratio of one third. Geometric, okay, um, and uh, we did have a special condition over here uh, that this would only work if the common ratio, the absolute value of the common ratio was less than one. So this one will work. Uh, we will be able to find um, its sum. So um, n equals one to infinity of a sub n is equal to the initial term or over one minus the common ratio, which is one third. So we get four, uh, one minus one third becomes two thirds. Uh, that's four divided by two thirds, which becomes multiplied by the reciprocal. Uh, so we get six. Okay. Uh, this next one here, uh, numerators are the same. Um, let's see here, um, but uh, the denominators are changing. Um, actually, it looks like uh, it looks like we're multiplying by two because that would have been two over sixty-four um, gives us one thirty-second, and then times this by two would have given us two over thirty-two, which would have given us one sixteenth. Take one sixteenth and multiply that by two. We get two sixteenths, which would get us reduced to a one eighth. So our common ratio is two, uh, and two, not less than one. All right. So this one, um, not possible. All right, not possible there. All right. What about this next one? Uh, our last one. Uh, six to three, three to three halves, three halves to three fourths. So we are multiplying by one half. Our common ratio is one half. Uh, one half is less than one, so we will be able to find the sum of this infinite geometric. So um, n equals one to infinity of a sub n. Uh, we're using this formula again. So the initial term, six over one minus the common ratio. Uh, one minus one half is one half. That's six divided by one half, which becomes multiplied by the reciprocal, and we'll get 12. All right, so this was our last lesson. Um, sorry, we didn't get to finish the year together, um, but I, I thank all of you for keeping up, doing these lessons, and trying your best. Um, uh, I hope you've enjoyed them. Uh, I, I maybe had a little too much fun with these, but again, uh, I'm so thankful to have all of you um, to, um, to keep me going through this. So thank you to all of you. Um, you've helped me get through this crazy time. So uh, please stay safe for however long this lasts. Um, in the halls next year, please come back, stop, say hi, let me know how you're doing. Um, uh, I won't look like this, so you should be able to recognize me. Um, but uh, um, hopefully you get to enjoy some of your summer. Um, but again, um, I miss all of you. Uh, stay safe.